Hi Darren, nice to see you today. We've come down to your gym and we saw you training hard earlier. How are you feeling? Yeah, I'm feeling uh, really good. Looking forward to the up and coming fight in the of September. Uh, it's been a long time, almost a year, so uh, I'm eager, eager to get back in. Now you're fighting Italian champion Rotolo. Yeah. Um, how much do you know about him? Not a great deal. I've, I've seen his record. I've had a look. He's had about 37 fights, only lost three. Uh, like you say, Italian champion. He, and I've watched a fair bit of him. He's quite elusive. He likes to move around on the back foot. Uh, quite difficult to pin down. Um, obviously, experience where he's had that many contests. So, you know, he, he'll be in there. He'll be durable. Uh, it'll just be a case of me, you know, closing, closing down the distance and, and, and ultimately trying to put on a good show to, to prove to everyone that I belong, at, you know, on the world stage. Now, he's only fought once out of Italy and he mm. lost to Silvestra. Mm. So do you think home advantage will be a part for you? Um, I think so. It, it always is because my, my, my supporters are always so vocal. And um, you, you talk about in football, uh, the crowd being like the 12th man. And, and it is almost like that in, in boxing. Um, in, when rounds are getting tough, if there are any tough rounds and your supporters sort of rally you on, and they get you through the fight. So uh, there will be there will be a slight advantage there. But obviously, where I'm saying he's had 37 fights, he's experienced. He's no mug. He knows his way around the ring. So uh, I don't think he will phase him that much. But he will definitely hear the uh, the faithful. Now he recently fought uh, in March, and as you said, it'll be almost a year since you've been mm. out of the ring. Will ring rust sort of play a little bit of a factor for you or not? I don't think so. Uh, we've been doing plenty of sparring uh, to sort of combat that. And uh, it's been going all right. I've got my eye back in. And, uh, you know, I suppose the only thing would be the occasion again, getting back in there. It's almost a year. Um, but, you know, that's what I buzz for. That's why we train so hard. It's sort of our, it's our time to shine, is fight night. And uh, I'm just looking forward to getting there, you know, as far as ring rust is concerned. I don't think that will uh, affect me at all. Now, the fight's being held at Alexandra Palace. Mm. You've won two titles there, so it's yeah. sort of a happy hunting ground for you. And you're uh, co-headlining the bill. How mm. excited are you? Yeah, over the moon. I've, I've tweeted a couple of times pictures of the view out of my bedroom. Oh, you live that close? Yeah, yeah, and you can see Ali Pali in the distance. So, yeah, it's, uh, it, you know, it's, a, it's a nice local venue, nice for the supporters to get down to, nice and easy. Um, and like you say, yeah, I've won two titles there. I won my first one there, Southern Area, and won the European there. So we've got some fond memories. And, uh, it, you know, if I could have cho chosen any venue, I suppose, other than Caesars Palace in Las Vegas, it would have been Ali Pali. So. Now, the other big fight on the bill is Tony Ballou versus mm. Miranda. Um, credit to Matchroom for putting on such a, a mm. big bill, you know, starting off the yeah. season. Yeah, I mean, Eddie's doing fantastic, uh, putting on these, these massive shows that... You know, generating more publicity and we're getting more interest from, you know, the general public, not just boxing fans, because the shows have got that much depth and that much quality that um, people are tuning in. I think, you know, pubs are going to be banged out and uh, there's going to be loads of people tuning in. I think the, the viewing figures are proving that anyway. Lots of people are tuning in. Kel, Kel Brooks had a couple of massive shows and, and there's been huge uh, viewing figures. So, uh, yeah, you know, the depth, the depth of the shows is fantastic. And the Tony Bell, you Miranda, uh, just proves that, you know, two, two, two fights headlining a show and uh, two quality fights, four good fighters. And, uh, and that, that's just the two main events, the, the rest what's of the show. Your, what's your prediction for his fight? I think Tony Bell, you will come through around the midway point. I think it's going to be fireworks. And uh, I think the younger, fresher man will come through. Now, you've had quite a few injuries that have kept mm. you out of action for a while. You Getting old. Surgery. Well, hold on, you've hit 30, yeah, yeah, so yeah. we've discussed that earlier, it's not that yeah. old. Um, but yeah, you had hip surgery, mm. um, so you fully recovered from everything now? Yeah, hips, hips are good, uh, finally. You know, 30 years <laughs> old and I've got bad, bad hips. Uh, no, they're all right. Um, to be fair, it wasn't a major, major operation, just keel surgery. I had the left one done probably three years ago and the right one done in uh, April, end of April. And they're feeling all right, I'm running. Um, and I'm training to, to my full capacity, if you like. And uh, I haven't been able to do that for a long time. And uh, it's nice to finally get behind me. I mean, you get little niggles, as everyone does in, in training camps. But the, the, the two major injuries I have, the two hips, uh, behind me now. And uh, it's exciting because now I can really push on and, and get back on that world stage and, and prove that's where I belong. And, you know, hopefully pick up one of the world titles, which I won't, you know, be happy with until I do that. You know, I won't be... 
you know, that's my dream and uh, I've, got, I've got to do it and now I've got injuries behind me. You'll be working going. with a new strength and conditioning coach, yep. Chris Kemp. Mm. Are you feeling the difference? I am, definitely. And uh, we're getting some good, some good feedback from sparring partners who are just saying, you know, the, the strength and the power is just, you know, just totally doubled. And, and I can feel that. I feel that in the ring. I'm, I'm able to boss, hold the centre more, boss big old guys around. And uh, yeah, that's a lot. A lot of that's due to, to Chris Kemp, the work we're doing. It's, you know, and, it, and it's freshening the training up a little bit. It's, uh, it gets a bit. Same old, same old, you know, I've been doing it for 18 years, boxing. And uh, it's a new sort of angle and it's a new sort of training that's really, really brought me on. And, uh, you know, it's such a fine line between winning and losing at the top level. Like, you know, I think that showed against Martinez. It was only, you know, it was a close fight. And um, if this little bit can add that, you know, give you that little more percentage, that could be the difference between winning and has, losing. Has he got you on a strict diet? He has, yeah. He has uh, steak, steak in the morning. Oh. With a handful of nuts, um, yeah, and all sorts of supplements, and but I feel good for it. I do yeah. feel good, and yeah, I'm, don't worry. I'm looking forward to the weigh-in, getting over and done with, so I can sort of give the the diet at the elbow. Um, and you, you did a training camp uh, in Spain, was that right? Yep. How did that go? Yeah, tough. I mean, we've been on a few camps now, and uh, Tony Sims, he always gets us in fantastic shape, and um, this is no, no no different. It was really tough, and. Uh, you know, three sessions a day, and um, yeah, same same as ever, hard as ever, and uh, that's how you want it, though. You know, there's no one will help you out in the ring, so you've got to prepare properly, and that's what we do when we're away. Now, going back to your last fight, probably the biggest fight of your career mm. against world champion Sergio Martinez. Mm. Now, you pushed him to 10 rounds, mm. and you came out with so much credibility 11. from that performance. <laughs> 11, sorry. <laughs> um, you came out with so much credibility mm. from that performance. You showed yeah. such heart and fight. What did you take? from that fight and from that experience as a whole? Yeah, bundled. Well, I suppose one of my own worst sort of enemy and critic at times and I really needed to prove to myself that I, I am world class for me to continue, if you like. And, uh, you know, if I'd have got sort of whitewashed or, or completely annihilated in that fight, 100% I would have jacked it in because I'm only in this sport to sort of get to the heights and win a world title. And in that fight, I proved I'm world class. And uh, it was unfortunate, I perforated my eardrum, got an injury, and I was, you know, I just couldn't continue no more. But, yeah, you know, I've, I've proved I'm in that, that class. It was, you know, it was fantastic being part of a massive occasion, like a big fight. And, you know, I've watched so many being, a, you know, a kid, a boxing fan watching big fights like that. And it was lovely taking part in one of them and, uh, and headlining in, in, you know, Atlantic City. How was Atlantic City? Yeah, it was good. It was... Uh, yeah, it was all right. It was a bit of a moody, moody Las Vegas, but it, it was a good, good experience as a whole. You know, we was in Canada, Niagara Falls for two weeks. Then we went into New York City for a, just under a week. Then Atlantic City. So it was, a, it was a great adventure. Some good stories and, uh, you know, uh, memories I'll treasure forever. But um, from what I've taken from the fire, you know, I've, I've learned, I've gained so much experience. It's only going to hold me in good stead in the future. I have to ask, um, how did you feel being um, announced as Darren Baker as opposed yeah. to Barker? Well, when they sit in the ring, I look straight at Eddie and I sort of sighed as I say, you know, it's my one moment. Exactly. You know, it's my massive time to fight. Shine. Exactly, and the biggest MC of them all got my name wrong. And uh, yeah, I was, I, was, I was gutted, to be honest with you, I'm not going to lie. But um, I'm a Jimmy, Jimmy Lennon Jr. man now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give him Buffer the elbow. Um, I spoke to your mum, I interviewed her a mm. while back um, for a piece on Ringside about mothers and boxing. Yeah. And she said that she really struggles to watch you fight. And mm. she went out to Atlantic City, yet she did not watch you fight. Mm. She paced up and down the boardwalk. Mm. How do you find her sort of reaction and how she copes with you boxing? Yeah. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a baby, aren't I? Yeah. I'm a firstborn. Um, no, it was an excuse for a holiday for her, I think. <laughs> But what she usually does, she, uh, I suppose everyone's different. Some mums, you know, we see the, the piece on what Sky done uh, about the mums and some have different approaches to, to, to watching their sons fight and some are really hands-on and want to get in there and some take a step back and, you know, even though my mum takes a step back, she's always there to support me. And she's what, a huge influence. Oh, actually. she has. She's really helped me on and, you know, if I need anything, whether it be food or anything picked up, she's always there for me or even just... You know, it's a tough sport, even a shoulder to cry on, if you like. And uh, she, she's always been there for me. And uh, what usually happens, I'll fight. She'll, we'll ring her up to the result, then she'll watch it back. She can't even watch so, the TV either. No, she won't even watch it live on telly. She'll, uh, 
she, you know, she'll find a result first, and then she'll have all the, the girls round up my nan and, and whoever else, and they'll come round and watch it. Um, now, you're a parent yourself, mm. um, so if your child wanted to go into boxing, yeah. knowing the sport as well as you do, mm. how would you feel about it? I'll probably try and put them off it, to be honest. I mean, I started boxing because of my dad was a boxer, but he never pushed me into it. It was something, I suppose, being a boy, being the eldest, I wanted to make my dad proud, and it was just something I I had done to, to try and do that. And he never once pushed me into the gym or even showed any interest to start off with at first. And um, it wasn't until I said I had my first amateur fight that he's become my number one fan. But to be honest, you know, it's, there's easier ways to earn your money out there. And uh, I'll probably, if I do have a son one day, be giving him a football, as I wish my dad gave me one instead of a pair of boxing gloves. Um, talking about family, um, your family have obviously experienced mm. unbelievable personal tragedy when mm. you lost your younger brother Gary yeah. in a car accident and you thought about quitting the sport altogether. Mm. Who or what sort of pushed you back into it? A combination of things really. Tony was a massive factor. I, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't have done it without Tony. I couldn't do it now without Tony. That was huge. Um, I, I had so much support from family, friends. Um, he was a boxer himself, wasn't he? Gary was, yeah. He was a real naturally talented one. And uh, there's no doubt he'd be in this position where I am, if not now, but uh, eventually. Um, but yeah, I had a lot of people, a lot of people helped me. You know, family were fantastic. Um, you know, I, and I really needed the support to get me back in the gym. And I did, and I did attempt to get back in the gym once and I just couldn't do it. And uh, I'd take some more time out and it was just a void. And, mm. I wasn't content with what I'd achieved yet in boxing, whether that be my own achievements or my brother's. Uh, and for that reason, I got back in the gym and, and I've been doing it ever since for, for the both of us, if you like. You know, I put in so much hard work and time and effort into boxing that I feel it owes me something now. I, you know, I deserve some success. And, uh, and like I say, Gary would have no doubt would have been, been in my position. So. It, 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 it's a proud. It's, it is proud for me to get in the ring and, and achieve and win some of these titles. I never dreamt I would have for the both of us. And when you go in and you do a little prayer, is that sort of for him? Yeah, always. Just you know, just um, sort of ask for health and strength off of God and sort of say you know, get, get my back, Gary, if you like. And then it does. That's another thing you know, I say about the supporters sort of pushing me along when things get hard. I always sort of feel as if my brother's there with me at times when things get hard. I don't know if that's me bringing it up uh, subconsciously and it sort of gives me a drive, but there's always something there when it gets tough, you know, it drags me through it. Now, moving on to another passion you have besides boxing. Yeah. It's a passion we both share. Yeah, we share. And that's yeah. uh, Chelsea Football Club. Yeah. Um, now, I know you went to Munich for your 30th birthday yeah. to watch us um, get to Champions League. Mm -hmm. Now. Besides barring possibly the birth of your daughter, was that the best night 100%, of your life? 100 percent, 100 percent. I would have said that if you didn't bring it up. It was, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, you just, how can you beat that? It what? was, it was just, it was unbelievable. Actually, on my birthday, um, we went. There was five of us went, and I was the only one. Uh, just friends, yeah. and uh, we drove there. Twelve hours. Oh really? Yeah, twelve hours, and uh, I was the only one who got a ticket. And um, it was just, it was fantastic, you know, when we, you know, Drogba scored that penalty, there was grown men, you know, crying, tears in their eyes, and uh, I haven't stopped smiling or watching it since. I was going to say, how many times have you watched oh, that? Do you know what, I go, I've got them both recorded, the ITV and the Sky Sports Front, and I just go back and forth watching them constantly. Const I, I couldn't tell you how many times I've watched it, I'm not just saying it. I, whenever I'm bored at home or I just need a bit of cheering up, bang, it's straight on. Do you actually, did you believe we could do it? Because we had such a journey there with the Napoli game and the Barcelona down to 10 men. Yeah. Even, you know, getting there and them scoring mm. the 86th minute. Yeah. Did you really believe we could do it? Because in a sense, we almost, it, for me, it felt like we'd almost lost three mm. times. Yeah. With then Drogba coming back, then the Robin penalty, then Mata missing a yeah. first penalty shootout. I was just, the range of emotions. Sure, for me, you hear people saying, saying, it's got to be your turn. It's mm. got to be all the, like, yeah, they, you've, but I suppose me being a fan, I can be quite negative sometimes. I think, well, you know, our luck's going to run out. We can't do it again. And uh, I was a bit sceptical. I wasn't sure if we could do it. And uh, yeah, everyone's saying, oh, yeah, it's your turn, it's your turn. And when they scored, I thought, oh, that's it. There's no chance now. And then the main man, the governor, stepped up and... Uh, 
What a way to end his career. Uh, it is unreal. I mean, that header, that's what I was behind the goals where the Chelsea fans were, and we were just going absolutely mental. mental. And it, what, what a fitting way. I mean, I was sort of urging Drogba to leave, if you like, because you have to go out like that. You cannot carry on. And it was unreal. Now it's there. Uh, it's how's, like, how's it compared to uh, winning titles? Well, it, I'm telling you, it was up there. It was, it was just the best feeling ever. It was unreal. It was fantastic. And uh, it's, it's a 30th I'll never, ever forget. Now, we've obviously signed uh, very good players. Hazard, uh, Oscar, Martin. Yeah. What are your predictions for us this season? It's going to be tough to compete with the, the Manchesters again, especially City with the depth they've got. And, and obviously, nice Van Persie as Van well. Van Persie, yeah. Um, I was going back to Oscar, I was a little bit gutted about him getting the 11 shirt. Mm. I don't know why. I know we couldn't retire it, but I was a little bit gutted. But yeah, it's I quite a feat to follow, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And I, well, I hope he does anyway. But uh, it's going to be tough for us, but we're in with a shot anyway. And do you go to a lot of the games? Yeah, all the home games. Well, the majority of uh, Matthew Arden lower. OK, proper diehard fan. Yeah, yeah. Now, I know you watched, um, you met a lot of the Chelsea boys in Munich. Yeah. Um, and your fight is on uh, an international weekend, so yeah. you're not missing a Chelsea game. Mm. Um, and there's an England game the night mm. before, so do you know if a lot of the boys are going to come and support you? Uh, hopefully, fingers crossed. You know, you get a lot of people saying, yeah, they're going to come, but then I think they're a bit worried about security and whatnot, some of the top players. But I know Jody Morris is coming. Um, He'll more, if Lampard does come, he'll come with Jody. So there'd be a few. I think Joe, Joe Cole might come down from Liverpool. He said he's, he's up for it. Ryan Bertrand. So a few of the boys uh, hopefully will turn up. Now, going back to boxing, obviously you said, you know, your goal and you don't want to hang up your, those gloves until you've got mm. that world title. What sort of opponents do you see coming up and, and, and what route do you think will take that? Well, I think, you know, I've got the, the ability to be any of the other world champions at and I've proved it against the sort of standout in the division, you know, if you like, it's Martinez and the rest. Uh, so so any, any other world champion they put in front of me, I'm sure I've got the beating of. I mean, we've got Daniel Gill, Felix Durham coming up soon in a unification fight. So it'd be, the interest, it'd be interesting to see if I could, you know, perhaps get the, the winner out of that. Obviously, my next fight being for the IBF in the continent, that puts me right in line for the IBF, so... Do you have a time frame? As, as soon as possible, really. I'm getting old. But um, I think I, I feel I'm in my prime. You know, we've we said the likes of Chris Kemp on board. I feel I'm, you know, getting fitter and stronger. The work I'm doing with Tony Sims, uh, I'm feeling better than ever. And, uh, yeah, you know, within the next two, three years, I'd like to have won it and defended it a few times and have my feet up, sipping a pina colada somewhere in Spain. Well, listen, thank you so much for talking to me. Good luck for September the 8th, and you'll have all the Chelsea fans behind you. Lovely. Thanks very much.